All right, guys. Uh, let's see. I'm down here in the Sin Lab today, and there's some people down here, so I'm going to keep my mask on while I make this one. Um, what we got going on today is we are kind of transitioning from just learning how to factor quadratics to learn how to use quadratics to solve, okay? And it's not much more work at all. It's really actually pretty easy, okay? So a um, couple things here. This first thing in this guided notes that you can uh, print off and have a copy of yourself um, is basically telling you that in order to solve any quadratic, it must first say equals zero, okay? I'm sure there'll be a couple examples here farther down on this. We'll, we'll make that happen, but it's got to say AX squared plus BX plus C, it's got to be set equal to zero. If it's not, then we need to use inverse operations to get it to be set equal to zero, okay? Um, there's going to be three steps when solving here, okay? So um, the first is to, like we just said, um, get the equation to say equals zero. All right, got to get it to say equals zero before you start, okay? And then step two is going to be to factor. All right, and then step three is going to be to set your factors equal to zero and solve for x. Okay? Now, one thing that you got to get used to here, a couple of vocab words, just... They can call these answers multiple different things, okay? Pretty self-explanatory and easy first is that they can call the answers to a quadratic solutions. Okay, they can call them solutions. Now, visually what answers are to a quadratic are, is another thing they can call them, they can call them x-intercepts. I'm just going to call put x-inter because this line is very small, okay? X-intercepts. Now, these, new, these next two are vocab words, okay? They can call them zeros, which makes sense because it's, it, it, it's the x values, again, up here that make the y equal zero, okay? And then lastly, they can also call them roots. So you need to know those vocab words that you're not surprised when you see those show up, okay? <clears throat> All right. So we're going to solve each quadratic here. And then for the first couple, I'm going to show you how you can check that on your graph. We know that the uh, solutions are x-intercepts. So after I get answers, I'm going to type them into my calculator and make sure that they really do hit the x-axis at those parts. It's a good way um, for you to kind of just check your solutions, make sure everything's going all right. Okay. All right. So let's go back here. I got my red pen ready. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to make this thing say equals zero. So the very first thing I'm going to do is add 8 to the other side. And I've got that x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And now I'm going to solve this by factor. This is just a simple trinomial with no a values. Okay. So I just need to open up my parentheses here. All right. Put my x's in front. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 8, multiply to be 8, and add to be 6. Those two numbers would be positive 4 and positive 2. X plus, sorry, 4 times 2 is 8. 4 plus 2 is 6, okay? So, uh, now, that would be factored. If the direction said factor, I would stop. Except the directors say solve by factory. So now I use the technical word for this. is called the zero product property, okay? What makes this quadratic equal zero are the two numbers that make these factors equal zero. So I now take x plus 4 and set it equal to 0 to get my first answer, which, of course, is x is negative 4. Okay, and then I take my other factor here, x plus 2, and set it equal to 0 and get that x equals negative 2. So my solutions are x equals negative 4 or x equals negative 2. My roots are the same. My zeros are the same. These words are all synonyms. Okay, we're just trying to hammer that point home. All right, they're also x-intercepts, right? Okay, so now what they're kind of asking you to do here, whoops, is just check that on your graphing calculator. Okay, so here's my graphing calculator here. I'll go to my y equals button. This means that this parabola should cross the x-axis at x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. I'll type it in, x squared plus 6x plus 8, and I'll graph it just to look. And as you can see, it does. It crosses at negative 2 and also at negative 4. 
All right. Um, here's another one here. Let me let me erase this part down here for you. Okay, so here in this one, again, I want to make this say equal zero, so I'm going to minus 6x. Now, do yourself a favor, okay, and write this in the order that you're used to seeing it, okay? So, of course, we like the x squared term to be in front, then the x term. So I'm going to write minus 6x. Then I'm going to write the plus 9, and now that equals zero, okay? So now I just factor this thing. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 9 and add to be negative 6, that would, of course, be minus 3 and minus 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 minus 3 is 6. So now I solve. I use the zero product property, which means I set each one of these parentheses equal to 0. Okay, so I've got x equals 3 is my first answer, which is the also known as solutions, roots, x-intercepts, zeros. All of those are the same. I'm trying to drive that home to you here. I'll then add 3 here to get x equals 3 again. Now, these, this is the same answer. We'll get to this, but this means that the answer is 3, and it has what's called multiplicity of 2. Just multiplicity just means how many times did it happen. So the answer is 3. It happens twice, okay? It, of course, isn't going to appear twice, okay? The graph can't cross. The quadratic can't cross at the same point twice. So what you're going to see here when you go to check your work is that this is one of the times when we just have one solution, okay, that actually what you're going to see is that the vertex is just sitting on the x-axis, okay? It doesn't actually cross over it. It's just sitting right there on the 3, okay? All right, let me uh, maybe hand pick one more here if I can find one that appears to be a little bit different. Uh, let's go to number 4, okay? This will be the last one we do, and I'll we can be done with this video for the day. All right, so again, not everything is going to be a, a trinomial or what they call an easy trinomial. My rules still apply, though. I need to make this say equal zero. So I got 2x squared minus 8x equals zero. Okay, whenever I see, this is now a binomial. Whenever I see a binomial, I think right away that this is either a GCF problem or it's a difference of squares. Okay, there is a negative, so there's a possibility that this is a different of squares, but two is not a perfect square and neither is eight. So I now know that my only option is that this is a GCF problem. I look for the largest number that divides two and also eight, which is two. There's an x squared on the first term and an x on the second term, so I can pull an x off of both of those things. Here, when I open up my parentheses and collect the leftovers, okay, there was a two on this first term, but I took it. There was an x squared. I took one of the x's, so just a single x remains, minus. 8 divided by 2 is 4. There was an x on that term, but I took it, so I'm done there. Now I just set each of these factors, including the 2x, equal to 0. Okay, so when I put the 2x equals 0, when I divide by 2, I get that x equals 0. That's my first solution or root or 0 or x-intercept. I then set x minus 4 equal to 0. I add 4. to get that x equals 4 is my second answer. Okay, again, I could use my calculator here to either check my work or um, whatever is being asked of you from the worksheet or from your teacher, okay? I type in the original problem, 2x squared minus 8x, okay? And I'm anticipating that's going to cross the x-axis at 0 and also at 4, and it does, okay? All right. Well, that's it for the day. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Um, if you are a face-to-face -face learner, I will see you tomorrow. Um, and if you're a virtual learner, I hope that your uh, year and day is going good so far. And we miss you here. All right. So have a good one, guys. See you later.